Hi, my name is Dr. Todd Cunningham. I'm a clinical and school psychologist and a professor at the University of Toronto. So today we're going to talk about burnout. And this is the first of two videos. Today we're going to talk about burnout. And then the next thing we're going to do is talk about um, what to do if you're feeling burnt out. So picture this. You're kind of halfway through the semester. Um, you have a lot to do. You have class to get to today. You have um, some readings that you need to complete. Plus, you know that there's um, a project due um, next week that you should get started on or continue to work on. And you're starting to think about the need to start to um, finish or start to review your notes as exams are, are looming in the, in the near future. However, as you're getting out of bed, you just kind of flop back in thinking, oh, this is just too much to do. Burnout is when work and life tasks seem overwhelming and you believe that you cannot cope um, any anymore. So work tasks could be actual work, employment work, but it can also be academic work in terms of what you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and life tasks can be anything from cooking to shopping to um, actually connecting with your friends um, around, around you. We all have lots of tasks that we have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And sometimes that list starts to get a little too long and we start to feel overwhelmed. And, and we start to feel overwhelmed when we feel, are starting to feel tired. Our energies are depleted. We're feeling more anxious about the possible fears of failure due to the fact that we're not getting things done. And that's taking a lot of our cognitive energy, both that fatigue and those worries. And therefore we're having a hard time focusing on the work that we're having to do. So even Though you might be sitting down to do your daily readings or you're sitting down to work on that project you're having a hard time to focus on it and actually get it um, completed and this is all because these tasks that we have in life all cause some level of stress now stress in general is a good thing if you have zero stress you're dead stress is of just the as a measure of how much energy our bodies are needing to use at any given um, point. So some stress is a really good thing. However, too much stress becomes a little bit problematic. As the tasks begin to build and build and build, um, and as we keep pushing ourselves to try and keep up and, and complete all of these tasks, both academic and life, life tasks, then our overall stress levels continue to rise and rise and rise. And as those stress levels rise, our brain starts to go into kind of um, three different um, stages to try and deal with high levels of, of, of stress. The first one is we try to do a social engagement. The first thing the brain tries to do is look for who, who's around us that we can kind of connect with to try and help us manage the load that we're um, under, talk through the issues or come up with new um, solutions. Typically, having one good friend is a real good protective factor, one person you can confide in and talk with, that being a, a relative or just a, a friend, acquaintance. But sometimes that can, doesn't happen, and especially with COVID these days. Our social relationships have been more disrupted. Um, many people are reporting more levels of loneliness due to the fact that they're not connecting as well. Much with, with the peoples around them. It's harder to connect with people on campuses due to social distancing um, policies that, that are in place or the disruptions of the, the natural bonding activities um, that happened at the beginning of the semester and the year to bring us together to create our new social relationships. And so when social relationships are interrupted, then the brain moves to the next level as the stress level goes up, which is the fight or flight. This is where the worried thoughts come in, where the feeling that, oh my goodness, I am, heck, I might fail. I might not be able to get this all done. This is feeling overwhelming to us. And fight or flight is important because it drives the energy resources to try and make us um, be, um, work through the challenges. However, it takes a lot of energy to be in fight or flight. Um, and fight or flight also detracts from our abilities to concentrate because as we're in fight or flight, we're often more worried about the possible looming failure or threat to ourselves than actually focusing on the tasks to get, get them done. And if we stay in fight or flight too much, we deplete the energies that we have and therefore we go into a freeze. And this is where that sense of tiredness and hard to get myself out of bed begins to, to emerge. 
And so these stressors, the things that can drive you stressed, um, as I said earlier, come from a number of different places. Um, the overall work and tasks that we have to do, financial stressors are a huge one that, that impact, impacts us in terms of um, making us feel like um, we need to figure out how just to pay for tuition or get food on our plates or how to support the loved ones around us. Feeling of isolation puts a lot of stress on us, uh, that, that lonely syndrome. Um, neglecting other areas of our life, you know, um, good physical activity, getting out walking, enjoying the, the sun, um, good sleep habits is really important, eating well, all, drinking water, all those are key things to be able to keep the body working well. As the body is working well, it gives us more energy, which allows us to engage better in the activities around us. And also the worries that we have, accommodating worry thoughts. How much time do we spend thinking about or worrying about the tasks that we have to do versus actually getting them, to, getting them done? So there's a bunch of factors that come into that kind of drive those stress levels up that can move us from that social to that fear, fight or flight to, to that more depressive yeah. symptom of disengaging. So how do you notice when these things are thing? What are the telltale signs to notice if you're kind of hitting that burnout state? Well, the first one is listen to those around you. You know, if people are saying, ah, you can be getting more irritable or you ever seem to be having a short temper uh, lately, those are good indications that your stress levels are quite high um, and you are not engaging in the way that you used to. You're more in that fight or flight um, response. If you feel unmotivated, if you wake up um, with that list to do, if you intend to do the work, but then you just feel like you just spend hours and hours watching YouTube videos or just surfing through the edit, nothing gets getting done. Um, that's a big indicator that you might be um, facing burnout. Um, feeling cynical about just like, oh my goodness, I'm, there's no point anymore. It's all done. I'm, I'm a failure. That's a good indicator that you're kind of hit that I'm burnt out. Um, if you you're feeling fatigued on a day-to-day -day basis and even having um, inability to sleep, often when we try to sleep, if our worried thoughts are high, if we have a lot of fear of what's going on, that we're going to be a failure, then that those worried thoughts keep us up as we lay there in night, um, at night and therefore can fall asleep. So monitoring that. Um, keeping a sleep log is a really good indicator to show, oh my goodness, I'm losing, I'm losing more sleep and the quality of sleep is not there. We have an impact on your social connections. You find that the relationships around you, you're feeling more distant, so there's more strain in those relationships. If you yourself are feeling anxious, you know, you're finding, you're worrying, you're finding that you're nervous more often, your heart's racing more, your palms are sweaty more often, you're having a hard time breathing, more shallow breath. Pay attention to those physical sen um, sensations that your body is showing, as well as the secondary symptoms such as headaches, stomach aches, and other muscular pain, which really show that the body is in a high level straits of, of stress that, that are go going on. All of these um, symptoms or a combination of these symptoms really can start to point to the fact that you might be at a place where you're starting to experience burnout. And if that's the case, so watch our next video to kind of start learning about what you can do to be able to help yourself.